Hello and welcome to another episode of Glory of Golden State Gaming. I'm your host, Swamp Swimmer, and with me as always, the thunder to my lightning, the Spacian. Man, you're good at these. Hi, everybody. Good to see ya. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you're uh, you're you're watching the news on on the online news on Facebook and Twitter, but this show on Netflix uh, is like uh, blowing up the charts. Have you heard of this show called Squid Game? Uh, yes, I, I I have heard of it. I haven't watched it, um, although I I kind of read a little synopsis um, online. It's sort of like Korean Hunger Games, but in the real like in the current world. Basically. It's like <laughs> real world Korean Hunger Games, but like big class divide things. Like the contestants are people who are poor and don't have any don't have a lot of debt. Yeah. Uh, it's freaking awesome. I'm not all the way through it. I've only watched six out of or seven out of nine episodes i think um okay but uh i'm really impressed by the show and i was thinking uh if even if you watched it i think this lends itself to being in the ninth age world i think like this is totally like an infernal dwarf Absolutely. world here yeah the slaves kind they, of they give you know, the slaves the opportunity to rise to rise above their station or, or pay off their debts and go home yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. think that would be Absolutely. a cool that would be a cool little like in-depth story in the Infernal Dwarves world. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how much you've ever done any business in Korea, but they're you know, they they are a very it's a very hierarchical business sort of structure and um you know, very, very, as you can imagine, you know, very rules focused, right? So I think, you know, in in, in that way there's some similarities there so yeah i think i think it, that's a good that's probably the best kind of dead on um if it was in the ninth age <laughs> comparison i've seen that's a good one <laughs> so but the one, one question i have for you is like would you would you would you want it to be a happy story or a sad story meaning would the infernal dwarves prevail and crush all the competitors and they all die or do you want to like see the slaves spartacus and like you know rise up and beat them somehow I mean, any story that ends with something bad happening to the Infernal Dwarves seems like a win for me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll throw my hat in the ring for Spartacus on that one. <laughs> I guess I'm the other way around. I just like dark story endings. I like tragedies rather than comedies. So I would want to see the, give, give them a hope of surviving and then they get crushed horribly and die. That's Ooh, probably that's more like the outcome, but um, <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm, the, I'm the optimist. <laughs> All right, let's get to the battle report. Here we go. Uh, round one, I got uh, round two. I got a small win, so we're on to your round two game. At um, oh my god, I forgot to mention. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to a certain goal. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Please, please subscribe. Um, the numbers are creeping up, though. So they are thanks, creeping thanks up. Everybody. I just want more. Well, we've been getting some good good feedback. You know, um, Ryan from over at Green Dragon Gaming's YouTube uh, pinged me and, and commented that he was really loving the battle report. So um, oh, we've got some got some good good uh, feedback. Thanks. Good, good, good. Um, that's great to hear. Hey, if you haven't that. checked out Green Dragon's Gaming, then definitely do. It's a great channel. I'll, I'll put. They, a, I haven't done a battle report in a little while, but that, it's good content. I'll put a link down in the description for him. Yeah. Uh, but you have been paired into Russell. Is that is this Russell Mooney of the Mooney Brothers? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I haven't played him before, so I haven't played either. Just but he's part of the game. Nice guy. He's playing ONG, uh, Don Assault, Hold the Ground. Yep. Uh, if you are interested in Vespasian's list, please go back to the round one video and we go over it a little more detail. But Russell. He's got the Goblin King on a Gargantula with Shieldbreaker, which is always nice. Classic. Uh, Goblin King on a Huntsman Spider, a Forest Goblin King on a Huntsman Spider with uh, Dust Forge, Alchemist Alloy, Hero's Heart, which is solid cowboy. Orc Shaman General, Master on Thaumaturgy, Skull Fetish, Crown of Autocracy. As he's got an Orc Shaman, a common Orc Shaman on a chariot apprentice on shamanism so just that plus one strength plus one toughness spell awaken the beast and then uh three blocks of 20 of i'm sorry four blocks of 20 feral orcs with paired weapons yep. so this is kind of like an mmu 
uh, MSU orc list, which is interesting. Then he's got eight trolls, eight bridge trolls, a boar chariot, five goblin raiders, three gro grotlings, and a double green, great green idol, one of which is a BSB. Yeah. I think that's an interesting list. I really do think that's an interesting list. Not subtle, um, but some but some high value choices. I think I love that that Wizard Apprentice Shamanism on the board chariot. I think that for two hundred points, that thing is a steal. Um, yeah. He's got Skull Fetish, which you know he, he wants to get lots of units in combat, so it's going to really rev his magic phase up. Um, you know he's got the crown and the big BSB bubble, so he shouldn't have to worry about leadership on top of the fact that the ferals don't care about it. Um, and the bridge trolls are a great kind of centerpiece to kind of build the line around. So yeah, it's a, um, I, I, th I thought a, a good list. Um, you know, I didn't have a chance to do a, a kind of a pre-battle, um, you know, matchup like mm -hmm. I, I have, but on paper, um, I like this, um, you know, two green idols and a gargantula king um, is great fodder for the divination wizard. Um, the the point, ancient yeah. dragon fights them all pretty well, like in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, and I have just a gang load of shooting to work on um, those feral orcs. So I was feeling, you know, relatively comp confident. I think the bridge trolls are tough, right? Distracting and combat, four up fortitude. I need to do some work on them with the Queen's Guard early to try to make them a little bit more manageable. But um, overall, I think I would have had this as a green uh, if I'd done the full rating on it. Okay. Fair enough, that makes sense. Uh, but you don't have any flaming attacks to get through that regen, right? Um, so the, the Queen's Guard do. Um, so I can do that from range. And then mm -hmm. the dragon with the flaming, uh, the breath, breath weapon. weapon. Yeah, good, yeah. good point. So there, there's there's some there's some parts of it um, that, that can work on it. Fate, Fate's Judgment is, you know, not, not terrible on them. Um, I mean, there's better targets, but obviously, you know, taking six wounds off of those trolls is, is nice if you can. All you gotta do is so, roll yeah. that six. All you gotta do is roll that yeah. six. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. It does happen. <laughs> All right, so this uh, this is this one's marked deployment in Vanguard. So go ahead and uh, go over to deployment. Yeah, so, um, so Russell won the choice for sides and he put me on this side. Um, I think a little bit of a mistake on his part because with Dawn Assault, I very much would have hated it to be on the other side with that mm -hmm. big house right in the middle of my line. Yeah, deny um, you, deny you the left, and then you're stuck in the center. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what, what why he didn't go that route, but um, he didn't. Um, and then I, I really wanted to know where he was going to put stuff, and so I dropped the Reavers as a first drop. Mm -hmm. uh, just to see what he did, and then he dropped off for first, um, which I kind of thought he would. I, I really thought the matchups would be important. In this he... plus hold, going second on hold is nice because you can be the one that dictates who picks it up at the end of each turn, right? So, was he trying to deny you the hill? Was that what his probably his thought process? It could have been. I just think that like having that house between the bulk of my battle line and the center objective is just crippling. I think for for the line. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what he was doing but i still think i still think i was able to better deploy with this setup than than the other i think okay um so he he put he put everything down um you can kind of see let me see here so i think sort of under his hand is the gargantula over there somewhere um and then the grotlings scouted and, and vanguarded over there um and then um from left to right he's got a feral orc unit the Great Green Isle BSB behind them. Great model, by the way. Um, he's got the two chariots teamed up, the uh, the Apprentice and the Boar Chariot. Mm -hmm. the big bridge troll unit um, in the middle. Behind it is his bunker with his shaman. Um, another feral orc unit. The other Great Green Eagle, another feral orc unit. And then he's got his little doggies vanguarded up there, and he's got his huntsman spider yeah. king behind the house. And um, for me, this is why I thought the matchups were important. So the lion is is there to zone the gargantula and kind of put pressure on the BSB Great Green Idol, keep him from getting out into the flank. Um, mm -hmm. And then the sea guard in the center, you know, able to advance basically straight and be, you know, if they take that wall, they're within six of the center, which is that egg nest there. Um, the Queen's Guard has got um, both characters in it, if I recall correctly. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. 
and then the dragon and the spears kind of hugged into the house. Um, key point, dragon, uniquely dragons specifically, are scoring um, in this mission. When it so, comes to the center, yeah. Yeah, special, so that was special nice. rules, yeah. Yeah, then bull thrower. Um, the, at this point, I've moved um, the reavers back. They were up kind of between the house and the hill. The sloop behind the house, I didn't want it to get shot with thaumaturgy, and then I backed the reavers up for the same reason. Um, mm -hmm. And and that was how I deployed. I got the bull thrower on the hill on the left and the, in the back with a good field of fire into the middle, so yeah. It's a good setup, yeah. Yeah, I felt pretty, pretty good about the deployment. Um, and really, I was thinking the dragon into, the, you know, after a couple turns of shooting the dragon into the trolls was kind of like where, where I was thinking I wanted the dragon to be. And he yeah. also can monsters One of the last moves, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go to the next picture here. This is top one movement. Yeah, so there's the gargantula now. You can see him behind that ruins there. Um, yeah, so um, just everything comes up. Um, Wait, this is you know, the gargantula? He... Yeah, correct. No, this is the... That's, that's a the, great... That's the other Great Green, green Idol, yeah. That's the oh. non-BSB. Yeah, yeah. And then he, he, this is the BSB, and then the actual spider is the is the actual spider. Correct, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So he, he moves everything up. Um, you know, not, not a lot of shuffling around, really. Um, I think one mistake he made... Um, was he, he really should have put that spider in the ruins for the cover, right? Mm. Um, having it having it out. I don't know if he was thinking, maybe he was worried about the zoning of the lions and the range for charge there, but one way or the other, I think that was a little bit of a mistake, but otherwise he just kind of full court press. He brings the idol around the house. The huntsman is in a good spot where he's out of arc of everything over there. And yeah, he's. Um, I think he's he's moving up the snotlings to, to threaten my bolt thrower eventually. So yeah, he's he's got himself in a good shape. Just a little bit of a mistake with the spider, I think. Mm. All right, this and, is bottom one movement. Yeah, so he he does. Uh, I think two. I want to say wounds to the dragon. Um, I think I, I let off like a trial of faith or, or a hand or maybe or something like that. Um, I should say one other mistake I thought he made. He didn't take Comet, which oh, really? in this match I think is is you know a real mistake. Um, he went Blasty, which you know fair enough. Um, so he took. When is, um, when is Comet a bad choice? Is it ever a bad choice? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I was um, I was very. Oh, thank you. I just got some pie. Look at this. Homemade pie. Look at that, everybody. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll have to chow down on that in a minute. Um, so, um, so anyways, um, what do I do? I move up a little bit with the lions. My main goal is to try to get more of them out of the water feature for a potential charge. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't really care too much. I mean, obviously I don't care about the spider. Um, and then the ferals coming in to me, I just don't, I, I think, yeah, I strike first. I'm going to take off probably like 10 of them before he strikes. So I wasn't too worried about that combat over there um otherwise i just kind of i kind of reposition i do a little bit of dancing you can kind of see the front of the sloop and the bottom right um i bring okay. that around so that yeah so that um he doesn't have any charge arcs and i can shoot at un unobstructed into the huntsman um kind of through the gap between the house and the hill um I think my reavers are like up on the hill, but out of arc of the great green idol. Um, I think I'm just gonna try to take some shots at his, um, I don't know, raiders or something. Yeah, just um, yeah so, um, and I moved the div mage over so that he can have range on the spider. Um, and that's about it. So then in, in my shooting and magic, um, I, I go back to that point I made. So between, I think the sea guard, the bolt throwers, and the div magic i do four wounds to the spider which is a great start in in top of one or bottom Gosh, of one I, th I thought you do more than that um i think the bull throwers missed the sea mm. guard actually did did some work so maybe it was four or five anyways it was it was a pretty substantial amount of wounds on the spider um and then i get a heal off on the dragon which was a, a top priority um and i do put um i want to say like four wounds on the trolls with the queen's guard so needing to start getting some work done on them 
Um, nice. That's nice. And I do, I sneak a wound, which ends up being relevant. I sneak a wound through on the Huntsman with the Sloop, which is actually, you know, with, um, you know, wounding on threes and, and him getting a four up re-rolling save, it's actually not that unlikely to sneak a wound through. So yeah. I was happy with that. That's not So not that was about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like this is top of two. This is his top. Yeah, yeah it's like so, four wounds on the spider here. Yeah, yeah, good eye. So, the, so he goes big, big aggressive here, which with his list, I can't, you know, can't really fault him for. Um, I think. Um, let me just kind of go left to right. So he he chaffs the lions with the grots, which makes sense. He pushes the spider way up, which was a little. I thought that was an odd move, um, given how wounded it was. Maybe if it was full health. Um, and then he pushes the trolls right up, brings up the the huntsman, and he's basically saying like, you know, do your worst, I guess. Um, <laughs> all, all of my units are in the front of the trolls, so that's key. He brings the idol up on the on the hill. I think you know, threatening some rerollable charges into my back line, basically. Um, and yeah, that's he's he's getting a bit kind of bogged down in the center just from his own units, right? Which is sort of I think one of the issues with this type of a list. Yeah. Um, but um, but otherwise, yeah. Every, he, and then he hides the raiders because he doesn't really want to chaff anything. Um, so yeah, that's that's about it. So into I think we've got mine next, right? I hope. Yeah, this is bottom yeah. two move. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. So um, I I hemmed and hawed about this, and and I probably should have mentioned I did get a bit lucky um, with the wizard hat. Um, I got spectral blades on the wizard hat. Ooh, that is helpful. Which lethals against trolls, and obviously reroll the wound against all these monsters is super nice. So I was pretty happy with that. So I figured with that kind of threat set up in the magic phase, that now is as good a time as any. Um, I bring the dragon and the spears in, basically, um, and um, my, you know, the dragon is set up so that he can overrun into those chariots, um, mm -hmm. and I, I take the grotling chaff, um, and then I basically turn the, you know, both of my shooting blocks and just say, all right, we're either going to take the spider down or he's going to take us down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so that's the that's the play there. Um, I do. The sloop, I can't remember exactly where the sloop, I think I might, might have, I brought it out of line of sight of his. Um, it's over here his, somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere over there. And then the um, the reavers come out to just kind of get in a threatening position and shoot at stuff. And that's about it. Um, so I think, I'm assuming that we go into his turn next. So let me tell you what, what ends up happening. Mm -hmm. um, so it, in my shooting and magic phase, um, he prioritizes dispelling the damage spells on the spider, which lets me get spe big spectral through on the dragon. Um, and I debated, I actually thought maybe about putting it on the spears because that that's, many attacks is that's nice. That's what I was thinking. But you know what? I, what ended up tipping the scales for me was the breath weapon because I do get to reroll the wounds on the breath weapon and it already ignores the, the fortitude. So it's just, it's risky. I, you roll that two on the breath weapon and then it's just like wasted. Yeah, I think in you know you'll see what ends up happening. But the other reason I did it was that if the dragon does get the overrun, then he has that reroll the wound, which is huge. If he gets the shamanism buff off on the chariot mage, which mm -hmm. was a concern that I had. So I kind of I balanced it all. I almost cast it on the spears and then just put it on the dragon. So it went through. Um, and then in my shooting phase, I take off the spider. Nice, which was big. Nice. Um, and then in my in the combat phase, I take off the grotlings, um, mm -hmm. which actually is a bit dicier than I initially thought, but I do it, so that's great. Um, and then in and the they are they're they're unstable, right? So they just pop. Yeah, they they no. I think that they were down to like four wounds and did nothing to me, and they popped. So, um, so I take them off, um, and then uh, the dragon and the spears go right through the through the trolls. I think there were like like three left one one that had been damaged i just punked them which was nice wow, wow. um and the dragon hits the overrun and goes into the chariots um so what i do then which i think my opponent didn't think about was i reform the spears and they basically chaff the huntsman mm -hmm. and all of his infantry blocks on the right um 
so essentially he can go he can do he can do nothing next turn on that right hand side um and then i've got time for my dragon to do the work he needs to do right so um, he does have he does have this unit right he does yeah um but the so and the other thing and this was a, a theme for this this battle was um i fail with my swift stride to catch the trolls so they do survive and rally which is awful um <laughs> but anyways so that's that's what happened here so now on to his turn so yeah, yeah. He, he takes that charge yeah so he brings both of the units and the huntsmen into the spears which is fine that's what they're there for he takes the charge into the flank of the dragon which is also fine um and that is so i i'd done the math on this um so if he kills the if he kills the if he, if he challenges me with the champion of the orcs and i do the max right so so four total i still have a charge for mm -hmm. five right he's got a charge flank big flank two ranks for five so worst case scenario i push i don't have to take the the risky break check um but if he goes for the damage which i thought he might do then i can do a lot of work right so um so he 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 goes in um and he brings the great green idol up um and that's about it um okay. yeah Oh. oh yeah okay so let me let me get up um let me let me tell you first get up on my soapbox and second tell you how everything ends um we this tournament started almost an hour late which meant that t rounds one two and three we had approximately two hours to play each mm -hmm. round um because there was a hard out at the um at the, at venue. the venue yeah so so this is this is now what this is his turn three, right? Yeah. Um, so at this point, I think we had like 30 minutes left, which is shocking, <laughs> right? Because there's not, not a ton has happened. And I, I, honestly, neither of us were playing slow, right? This was a, we, we got into combat right away. There was not a lot of dancing around this, you know, there, his blocks are easy to move. Anyways, long story short. So we're in turn three and the game's almost over um, despite playing quickly. Um, so what happens here um from this point i charge the sloop um oh sorry in his turn um i he 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 does not get awaken the beast up i prioritize stopping that and he decides to just go full damage at me yeah. um and he does not manage to do a lot of wounds to the dragon he just doesn't get the sixes um i take off the chariot mage with my attacks and do a bunch of wounds to the um to the to the unit um, that happens either this turn or next turn but one way or the other the dragon sticks and um and then in my turn the lions come into the flank of that feral orc unit yeah um and then he picks up the the spears um obviously yeah but um but then in my turn um the one of the bullfurs takes off the huntsman with only you know he, he only had two wounds left so take him off with a single shot which was Ooh, nice nice um and i did two wounds not three so it was impactful the sloop did that damage yeah did that one um, single wound yeah yeah the the reavers do something funny i don't know if you can see it but that that work unit there in the forest um right there kind this of one? above yeah above the objective the reavers take a charge into their flank and break them because they're not steadfast um what? and and once again um fail to catch them with a swift stride run right a swift stride pursuit against a non-swift stride run yikes um but it was still funny um but it does allow me to pin you can see the trolls behind them i do the over and i hit the trolls in the flank and it does allow me to pin the trolls For um, sure, yeah. which yeah. which is helpful um on the left hand side the lions and the dragon clean up the chariots and the feral orcs and then in his turn four he takes what i think was a mistake but he charges the great green idol into the dragon i think he's hoping for just a big crush attack and then yeah. take it off exactly. um but he fails to do it and the dragons the lions kill the great green idol um so 
And then I, I also put my sloop into the rear of the Great Green Idol on the right, um, because with charge and the rear, and he doesn't do a lot of damage, the sloop just ends up tying up that model till the end of turn four, right? So where are we at at the end of turn four? I've killed the Gargantula, neutered the trolls, killed the BSB Great Green Idol. I've got almost all of his Feral Orc units either dead or on the run, right? And I, and I win the objective in turn four. So he won it in turns two and three, as you could obviously see. And I win it in turn four. At this point, he has only managed to kill, because he actually doesn't kill the spears, they run and, and escape and rally. Yeah. At the end of the game, he's killed the Reavers, 185 points. And I've killed something close to like 3,000, almost 3,500, right? So it's a 17-3 it's a on but points. But who, who got, yeah, who got the secondary? We haven't been talking so about it. He wins the secondary because he got round two, mm -hmm. turn two, and turn three, and I got turn four, right? He has no scoring units left that can contest it in turns five and six, but because we run out of time, he wins the secondary. Mm. And so I talked to the TO about this because this is nonsense, I think. And, and no offense to Russell, but just like, you know, it's, it's ridiculous that I literally like I could have just stood there and done nothing in turns five and six and won the secondary and, and a 20. Yeah. Um, now, Russell, I talked to Russell about it. You know, um, he was he was a gentleman about it. And um, he basically said, why don't we roll a dice? And on a four up, you can have the six points. And on a, and a one through three, I can have the six points. At that point, the, the TO had refused to step in on the topic. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and so that was a, you know, a 50, 50 chance at six points as opposed to a zero chance. So I took it and I lost that role. Well. Um, I think, you know, this is, you know, I love Alex. I love Infernal Zoo. I've been going, I think I've gone to five of them. Um, but two hours is not enough time to play a competitive yeah, ninth sure. age game. For so, sure. th you know, in my books, this is a 20, I think on, on paper, I ended up with a 14 in this game. So, oh, let's see here. um, yeah. Yeah, 14. Yeah. Um, I think a, a, a good matchup. Um, and, uh, you know, Spectral was obviously a big role for the Wizard Hat in this match. Um, yeah, that helped a lot. And, yeah, and I think, you know, a couple of little deployment things and, and a first turn move with the Spider that were a little questionable that I think might have made a big difference if they'd been a little different. But, um, Good game. I'd absolutely play Russell again. I think he got one of my best opponent votes, and um, I also like the theme of his list. It's very, um, it's you know, very, it's very, very orky, it's very orky. Yeah. So, good game. Thanks, Russell. And um, and yeah, it's a, uh, a a nice game. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great game. Um, yeah, it was unfortunate how uh, time got crunched with the late start and the hard, the hard have to get out of the room time. Um, I know he tried to extend it a little bit, but it wasn't a whole lot. It just was unfortunate all the way around. I think Alex is aware of it and he's trying to to do better. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, I I've never run a GT, right? And and I and I and I'm not planning to. It's it's a hard job, a hundred percent. But it does time is one you know is one thing that is a, is a little bit of a pet peeve getting to be a pet peeve of mine and, and it was it was a shame to have you know three games the first day be be under the gun like that and and have a real impact on the results right so anyways well anyway a little sneak peek uh with the x the the zoo extra points and battle points after round two vespasian and i are on the exact same number of points big game ding, 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 ding. <laughs> but um but hey if you're still watching please like and subscribe uh have a good evening thanks everybody